Welcome back to Keto with Lee, your low carb lifestyle channel. I am your host, Sonia Lee, and today we are going to create something together. I've never done it. Whew. So let's see if it's a fail or a try or a strike or a attaboy. I don't know. Let's see if it works, period, right? So today's recipe is going to be stuffed, as you saw by the thumbnail, stuffed chicken breast with spinach, um, sun-dried tomatoes, and goat cheese. Now, I'm going to attempt to make this in my air fryer. Wish me luck. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is clean up my chicken. And you don't have to make this step. However, I don't like to chew into these things here. I find it really gross. So, I know, I know, keto police, you're supposed to leave the fat on. I'm sorry, I don't like biting into it. So I add fat a different way. And it's completely okay. But this is my chicken cutlet, and what I've noticed is this part here it's typically more chewy. I don't like it either. So I cut it away. Don't judge me. Just a little piece there. I don't like it. Especially when I do chicken tenders, I tend to cut that out. Now, you want to butterfly it. So since I already started on that edge, you put your hand down on it, hold it, right? And you basically cut down almost all the way like so. That way you can put your filling. So I'm gonna do that to all the rest of them. All right, now that that's all done, I'm gonna move on to measuring everything. The greatest thing about using this scale is that I don't need to use the, the bowl that came with it. I can actually put any bowl. All I have to do is tear it or tea set it. use this one there we go sorry wrong one is this one up here to, to tear it back to zero and I'm gonna measure out my my goat cheese all right so it turned off it has that automatic shut off and it automatically tears if you put the bowl before um, turning it on so that works so let's see um, Two ounces. If you hear a teenager in the background, nothing I can do about that. He's talking to whoever he's talking to. And that's almost four. How many are in here? Oh, it's ten. Okay. So four ounces, four point eight ounces. That seems a bit much. Hold on. Making a mess. I always make a mess, don't I? It's insane. I'm gonna put this in a different container anyway. 
four. So I think about four because you're just putting a little bit with the veggies and stuff that we're gonna add to this. Oh, trying to get four. Four! Yes, that's about right. So that's what we're gonna use. Okay, so for the sun-dried tomatoes, it says half of an ounce, about 14 grams. So let's go to grams. Um, no, that's for temperature unit right here. Grams, we want 14 grams. It would equal, um, how many carbs? Eight grams of carbs, but with two, so it nets six. Let's see what that looks like. I don't even think I need that many. That's 18. That's 13. That's 16. We need 14. One more. Bam. So this is what 14 grams looks like. I think that's fine. I can put two or three in each piece. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my rosemary and just go in the opposite direction. Get some off. I don't want too much because it's so potent. This is fresh from my little yard that I have growing out there. All right, so that's it. So what do you think? Like half a teaspoon maybe? That's what I think. Oh, half a teaspoon, let's see. Yeah, or a quarter. It's very fragrant, so you don't need too much. This is what we're gonna do with the rosemary. We're actually gonna put it into the goat cheese. Here is the goat cheese. That's what four ounces of the goat cheese looks like. Here is the rosemary that we picked fresh from my little garden out back. What I'm gonna do is mm -hmm, sprinkle some of that. So I'm just gonna kind of mix it in there so that when we stuff the chicken, it will be nicely seasoned, see? Just much easier. Since it's very little, I just want every bite that, you know, we take be as even as possible. Sound good? Good. Now we season the chicken. So like I said, salt, pepper, this is gonna be to your taste and there's one two three four of them so i'm going to start with the outer sides first and i'm putting this pan right into my air fryer you'll see that as soon as i do it but i love these because i can bend these to the shape of my air fryer and it fits perfectly i will link the i'll put a link let me make a note for myself link to um, air fryer so what i'm going to do is put a link in the description for the particular air fryer that I use, so that was salt, and I use pink Himalayan salt, however, currently this is, um, I ran out and I got um, sea salt. Um, and then black pepper. So I'm gonna put a link in the description for the air fryer that I currently use. And I do have to tell you that I will get, um, what is that called? No, I'm not sponsored, but I do get a little bit of money if you do purchase through that link. So it does help the channel out, guys. So I'm flipping them over, and I'm going to do the same thing. To not bore you, I'm going to fast forward it at this time. I'm just doing salt, pepper, and garlic. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and stuff these, but I need to get my toothpicks out. Just little wooden toothpicks and to shut them up, <laughs> to close them. And then we're gonna go off to the air fryer. So we're gonna do one at a time, and I'm going to walk you through the first one, close it up, and then fast forward the rest. So I'm gonna take about a tablespoon of the cheese and try and spread it in there. Like that. Maybe a tablespoon and a half. 
okay? Because some of it's gonna ooze out, so you don't want it to, you wanna lose that. It's gonna be delicious. All right, so about a tablespoon and a half. Next, I'm gonna put some of these sun-dried tomatoes. Okay. And lastly, I'm just gonna grab, this is um, organic baby spinach. Ugh. Organic baby spinach. And all I'm gonna do, I have a camera guy back there. You guys have met him before. I'm gonna grab one handful because you know spinach, you could use 20 bags and end up with something, something like, like that, that, right? So what I'm gonna do to this spinach is I am going to break it a little bit and kind of push it in there and push it in there and close the flap, okay? And then I'm gonna stick the toothpicks in here to close it up and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so Make sure everything's in there. And basically lip to lip with the chicken, right? <laughs> All right. Here's one. Thank you, my handy helper. Remember I used to call you that in the beginning? Mm -hmm. Here's number two. And throw the one you dropped out. And here's number three. So that is what it's gonna look like. Oh, and that one slipped right out. All right, there you go. There you go. And you can also use string, but this is what you want. All the stuffing in the middle. You could put, can I get another one? I want to close this little thing right here just to make sure. And then we're going to stuff the rest of them and move on to the next step. This is what it looks like. Off to the air fryer. Up a little so that it fits into the air fryer. There's a piece of aluminum there. Now we are going to put it almost 15 minutes at 450 degrees. See you soon. So I did take it out just now. I stopped it halfway. You can see. Hold on. Sorry guys. All right, so instead of 10 minutes, I went ahead and stopped it halfway and I went ahead and flipped them again. Just trying to get even cooking because these air fryers, if you don't turn them, the food in them that you're cooking they will not evenly cook in the sense of the, you know the crispiness on or the browning on all sides once this dings we're gonna go ahead and flip them we're kind of turn them a little so they cook on all sides all right so while the chicken is in the air fryer in here we're going to do our balsamic glaze so I'm taking one cup of balsamic vinegar and I am going to cook it on medium high until it is thick and syrupy so I'll show you that texture that consistency when I get there You want to cook this down to about a third it's going to be real syrupy that's how you know you've gotten there real thick real thick could you add xanthan gum sure but I try not to use that just let it do it let, let the process happen naturally So I went ahead and stopped it, and I want you to see this consistency here. See how thick that is now? Now it's not as thick as I wanted, but I stopped it because I didn't put enough in here. See that? 
but it is very thick enough to drizzle on top without having to do too much work see that see the how thick it is look at that so smells very delicious so next time i told you this is my first time making this and i'm experimenting along with you look at these they look amazing they really do look at that nice and crispy browned a little charred on the um baby quiet a little charred on the spinach there so now we want for chicken breast we want to do 150 degrees fahrenheit and we're almost there it's at 146 so i'm going to turn them around one more time and put them for another five minutes or so and i'll show you what that looks like with the glaze too yum all right guys this is the final product so as you see here it's very crispy on the outside very hot too and what i did was i was afraid that it'll be dry around the edges and stuff so what i did was i basted it with its own juices i think there's some left in there see that so i just basted the chicken with that now I'm going to plate this so you can see the final product.